So with that, I'd like to welcome our guest today, 2015 Management Alumni Menno Axt. Hi, folks. Um, <laughs> do you want me to start talking about myself, Patty, or should I, I was do you want to another talk? little introduction here? Menno is Perfect. a dear friend of mine. He's one of the most brilliant and successful people to ever have graduated from CSU. He was on the CSU ski team traveling all winter, all while excelling in classes and extracurriculars and caring for a sweet dog at home. Menno is currently head of platform at Dogpatch Labs and NDRC, one of Ireland's leading startup hubs. During his time, Menno has reviewed and interviewed over 5,000 startups and has direct relationships and interactions with over 100 angel investors, both in Ireland and overseas. And you'll see today his incredible energy and perseverance, which has made Menno recognized as one of the most connected people in Ireland's startup ecosystem. He's also an angel investor himself. So Menno, thanks for joining us today, or I guess since you're in Ireland and it's seven hours ahead tonight. Thanks for taking the time. No, thanks so much. I am really happy to be here. I uh, I love giving back to CSU um, and hopefully like inspiring some, like if you're sitting here, right, like and thinking about like what's next in your career, right, um, inspiring some of you guys to become an entrepreneur or go and join a startup, right? And 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 go go into this math world. <laughs> well, we appreciate you taking the time and excited to hear from you on the topic today. Um, so let's set the scene. You know, our topic is entrepreneurship and you started your first company when you were 13. Can you tell us a little about who you are, your path to Colorado State from your home country and how you decided on management within the college business? Yeah, totally. Um, so... Uh, I am from Amsterdam in the Netherlands, uh, lived there till I was 16 when I graduated uh, high school over there um, and always had an interest in building like companies and startups and everything like that. So when I was 13, I uh, stumbled upon uh, becoming quite good at organizing travel trips, right? And uh, started building a business around that and uh, doing that for, for small to medium sized businesses mainly. Um, and then when it was time to go and, and graduate high school, um, I, I wanted to go to the US. I had a big passion of, of moving over there just because the entrepreneurial ecosystem in the US is a little bit more advanced than it was back in Europe, especially in those days. And so um, I visited about 26 colleges, actually like as far east as Rhode Island to as far west as, as uh, Portland. And when I came at, to CSU, um, what really stood with me was that this was Ivy League quality education that CSU could offer me with like a blue collar work ethic throughout it. And like that just really resonated with me. And then also um, Colorado is and was at the time on an incredible boost of entrepreneurship. Um, one of the most like world's recognized like startup organizations actually in the world tech stars is obviously only from like four, like 50 minutes down the road in Boulder. And so like, just like the whole ecosystem in Colorado is actually world-class and it's something that uh, the rest of the world actually I figured out after I graduated really looks up to but like when I went there it I, I just felt this um, like this big um, pull towards being at CSU and so that's why I uh, decided to do that. Why I picked management is um, it probably was a almost maybe more I don't know if it was necessarily a, like a it was a little bit by a process of elimination just because the other concentrations didn't necessarily appeal to me. But what at the time was really important was is um, that's where most of the entrepreneurship co courses were hosted under the management concentration. And so I just was interested in learning more about that, being involved in that world. And so um, that's um, why, why I picked that concentration. Love it. Yes, it's it's quite the great place to be. I know I'm a little biased living here and coming to school here myself and never leaving. So um, yeah, great place to be. So Menno, it's a great place here. Why Ireland? You know, you have the world at your fingertips and have landed on the Emerald Isle. How can you tell yeah. us a little bit about your career path? 
Absolutely. So career path actually like all road leads back, all roads lead back to CSU really far for me on that. Um, so so what happened while I was at CSU, I joined uh, the uh, new venture accelerator, which was basically an accelerator program for startups mm -hmm. at CSU. And I joined that with my startup and with my co-founder and the, 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 the managing director of that program uh, was a was a lady called Charisse and Charisse um my startup didn't go anywhere and and that was actually um i learned a lot from the failures that i had with that startup um but as it didn't go anywhere sharice actually left csu and opened up a startup hub or joined a startup hub organization called galvanize and so um what we decided to, so she needed people to come and help her and so she was like man your startup isn't going anywhere do you want to actually come and like join me and so i i said like absolutely like this seems like a great thing right and so for a year long straight after i graduated from csu i helped galvanize scale uh, across the uh, across the us so we opened up locations not only in fort collins but also in seattle and austin in new york uh, in phoenix at the time and for me um that meant that i like i I got I got to experience that and got exposure to that, um, but at the end of that year, the U.S. government decided that my they they couldn't renew my visa, and so I had to leave. And so, um, Vi Galvanize was part of this global network called the Google for Startups Hub. And uh, via that network, they uh, they they send around this email saying like this experience and energetic uh, guy is is available. Is anyone? <laughs> else in the world may be interested in him and so that's how i ended up at dog patches dog patch is always a, a member to it and and it comes back i think to one thing that like that i that i that keeps coming back and it's it's the importance of networking and i know it like it's it's really cliche but it was one of the things as i was as i was trying to prepare for this talk your network is so incredibly important because it helps you only be like one or two handshakes away from whatever person you want to be and the amount of um the amount of the amount that people are actually willing to help you and open up their network to you as well is just like incredible and like there, there are great tools out there, like such as like LinkedIn, right? Like they can show you like how you can get connected with other people, but like try and like really work on on building your own network because it's a it's it's a, it's a gift that generally keeps on giving back, basically. Coming from one of Ireland's most connected people in the startup ecosystem, there the importance of networking. Oh, I love it. So Menno, your company, Dogpatch Labs, uh, it's a leading startup hub in Ireland. Can you define what a startup hub is, what you do, why you exist, and how and why you've been successful enough to attract the attention of literally royalty, like the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, as well yeah. as the King and Queen of the Netherlands, like to honor yeah. what you're doing? Yeah. Um, so... So, so Dog Patch is a startup hub, and our mission is to accelerate uh, the the startup ecosystem in Ireland. And so, what we do is we are the central nodes uh, that are connected to everything around you, right? To be able to help you accelerate as a startup founder. So, a few of the things that we do, right, is we have a uh, we have a co-working space. So we have about 40,000 square foot of co-working space. 500 people work out of here daily. We have an investment arm. So we directly invest in startups uh, to support them their, with their growth as well. We have an accelerator that helps you get connected to help you grow your company, right? And get connected with mentors and experts, right? To really support you uh, along that as well. We spun out a policy company right because if you like if you think about it if you want to build the, if, if you want to make ireland the best start like country to start a startup in europe you need to go and have the best policy environment right so government legislation and so what we did is we actually spun that out right um and so really like that's what we're that's what we're focused on so that's what the startup hope 
is. And um, we've been fortunate, right? So like, uh, like the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, like that's, that's Harry and Harry and Meghan. Why Harry and Meghan were interested in coming over here is because we actually have one of the largest um, nonprofit organizations in, in the world that teaches children how to code in over 200 countries. Like they're based over here. They're headquartered over here. They're actually, they're, they're, they were founded by an Irish company, by an Irish organization. And they wanted to come and see how these children were learning how to code. And so like, that's, that's why they are interested in, in learning more uh, about this. And I think like, why Ireland? Like, to be completely honest, right? And, yeah. and maybe this is a bit of a lesson as well, right? Like I moved over here on a three month contract taking a severe pay cut from what I was paid in at Galvanized. Like I like I I and but I there was this energy that the founder and had and like this was a small like we were three people when I joined Dogpatch, right? And now we're fifth we're four, like we just made our 50th offer uh, yesterday. So like we're now a team of 50, right? So um so, so I just felt like I felt like I, I was I was making a bet on the company succeeding, right? And and when I, when I moved over here, and um, turned out well. I, I'm very happy over here. Um, but Ireland, I think, is uniquely positioned as this bridge in between Europe and the U.S. Like we're the only English-speaking country right now, or the, in the European Union, uh, or the biggest. And so, therefore, all the like all the like fan companies, right? Facebook, Apple, Amazon, uh, Google, everyone like that, they all have their, their, their European headquarters over here. And so like this ecosystem is completely booming and it's growing incredibly fast, which is exciting um, as well. That's so exciting. Um, and so it sounds like there's tons of opportunities to work within the space and within entrepreneurship without actually being one of those entrepreneurs yourself. Yeah, and, and that's actually, when I graduated, I, um, I thought about like, my, 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 I, like, I had started a startup through college that failed, right? But I was like, like I want to go and do this again. And, and, and someone gave me the, like, the advice, right? Like, and it sounds bad, but it actually makes a lot of sense. And, it, and, and, and what she said it was, go and waste someone else's money before you go and waste your own money. And one of the things I think is really important before you want to go and start your own startup specifically is go and join another early stage startups, one, two, three years, right? And look, just learn the ropes, see how people are doing it, right? Because um, there's this ever going on debate, right? And I need to watch out because I'm always in an academic environment, right? Where it's like, <laughs> Is, is entrepreneurship something that you can teach or not? And like the, 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 the opinions vary on this, and on, the, on this wildly, right? But I do definitely think that entrepreneurship, there, there are a lot of things that are similar to an apprenticeship, right? Where you're actually learning a lot by, um, by, by seeing others do it, by being part of it. And yeah. also, um, one of the things that's really important to think about, right? The first few years for a startup are really, really tough. And um, often what, what, the, what the curve looks like, right? Of a startup is you invest really, really heavily, right? So you're making no money, you're losing lots of money, right? Because you're using invest money to then be able to build something that can grow really, really quick, right? Mm -hmm. While a traditional SMB might be more on a linear curve, right? Like they start at zero and like they just slowly grow year over year, they grow their, 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 their revenue a little bit mm -hmm. and so uh, like one of the things that it's really important to feel right is like is this working or is this not working and so recommend to anyone right like go and like find a great early stage startup to join if you want to go and build a startup in the future like first mm -hmm. join one and then go and, and build it later um, because it's just incredibly important to like feel that energy, right? As well. Totally. And Center for Entrepreneurship here at CSU, they do amazing work. I know that there's some uh, 
entrepreneurship students on the line. There's some Business 100 students. Um, so Minnow, can you talk to us a little bit about angel investing? You were just featured on the cover of one of yeah. the largest magazines in all of Europe for angel investing. Why? What does that mean to you? Um, how did you get involved? Why are investors like that important? Yeah. So angel investing is basically um, getting money from individuals to help you go and, and start your business, right? So if you think about you can get business from to like from multiple sources right but if you talk about private capital right either you go and get it from other businesses that are investing right such as like pension funds or like family offices right and those types of things or you can get it from angel investors which are usually um, successful business people um, that are passionate about helping the next generation of entrepreneurs get started and often have a great network as well and so why am I passionate about that is because um, it is a key it's a key component if you want to have a great uh, ecosystem uh, startup ecosystem uh, is having those angel investors there and having them present and um, currently um, it's not as prominent yet in Europe. Um, in the US, it's already a lot more prominent, right? Where where it's where it's 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 becoming more and more accessible. But in Europe, we're still a few years behind, probably on on where the US is. And so that's um, what that's why I, that's why I was talking about that, trying to promote that and make that uh, and and highlight some of the issues that are currently in the system uh, around that amazing you're you're great <laughs> you're doing great work Meadow. um can you just thinking back to your time at csu i know i'm gonna age us here seven years ago uh did anything you do you know coursework internships uh clubs and orgs or relationships you've built uh still impact affect what you're doing professionally today i know you touched on that all roads lead back to csu but anything yeah. stands out um like, look, like genuinely, as I said, I would not have been to like where I am today without CSU. Um, so I think that the biggest gift that CSU gave me was my kickstart in terms of my network and trying to help me um, and, and try and help me grow um with 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 that and then another thing i think csu taught me it's a lot around um responsibility i was i was president of the ski team at my time over there so like i was managing like um i like i would say six figure budget at the time right like and so like just like like bringing all those things and managing all those things just um like it taught me a lot of a, a lot of responsibility um so like that's i think what like what like how i um look back on my time at csu like doing that and also like like some of the people that i like that i met in in classes and that i worked with i still talk to and i'm still um are, are like are are some like great people that like i'm always keeping track of like if <laughs> they're looking to like go and like for their next opportunity like i would hire them in an instant basically right and so it's 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 again like it comes back to um that network 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 um well like i said 20 minutes would fly by and it is now 12 20 so i want to open it up to questions that might we might have from the audience if anybody wants to unmute themselves or just send them in the chat. Um, and while people are thinking of that, Menno, I have one final question. What advice do you have for students? We have a ton that are interested in international business and I know you've traveled all over the world. Um, what advice do you have for students interested in a global career? Um, what advice do I have? <laughs> um, move abroad and go and like work for uh, for 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 a great tech company that is that is that is from somewhere else right um there are some amazing tech companies being built here in europe there are some amazing tech stars that are being built in asia and latin america 
And if you are passionate about doing that, like go and do it. Like you haven't, you like most of you will have one advantage over me is that English is your native language, right? So like that's the first language that you speak. And um, fortunately un, or like unfortunately, like the majority of the tech world runs in, in English, right? So you just have such an incredible advantage that you can like speak like the language straight away and, and, and be able to um, participate in it. But yeah, I, I'm always, I think I'm a, I'm a bigger fan personally of joining a, not necessarily local company, but like joining a, 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 a company from a certain place and scaling from there, right? Rather than like joining, say an Accenture, right? Or, or like a big, like a big consultancy firm and, and traveling that way, right? I feel like you're less immersed in the local environment actually, right? Because you're kind of parachuting in and then like parachuting out again. But if you actually are built, like if you're actually part of a team that's building somewhere um, locally for a global market, I think it can be really powerful and um, best way to like learn. Absolutely, immersive. All right, does anybody have any questions for Menno from the audience? Let's see. Hello. Hi, Abby, how are you? I'm good, thank you so much for chatting with us today. Um, so you were clearly interested in business in like entrepreneurship at a very young age. I'm curious, like, what sparked that interest and if you ever considered doing anything else or if you just knew like entrepreneurship was the path for you and yeah. what helped you make that decision good question um so i believe that entrepreneurs are are the people that are going to solve some of the biggest challenges that we are facing ahead in this world and I think that business is an incredible way of solving some of those problems. Um, so uh, that is what I, that's, that's why I was passionate about it, right? I think it's a great way to solve problems. Um, what would I have done differently? I don't know if I would have been happier, right? Um, but sometimes I wish I would have like done like a double major in like engineering or in like something else as well. Like that has a really like typically like applied skill um, because what I um, so that, like that's sometimes like sometimes I'm wondering, right, like would I have been better off having had a law degree together with like a business right and 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 doing that so that's the the, the only thing that i'm sometimes like oh maybe i should have like studied something different right because um as you as you progress in your career right like you will you will be everyone will be forced to understand a little bit about business right but not everyone necessarily will be forced to know a little bit about like engineering or law or like or anything like that so that's one of the things that i'm like oh maybe i like i i should have i should have done done that but like i mean it's i think that w the way that we are experiencing and going through education is going to significantly change i don't think that people are like if we look at our at, at the generation above us right like our parents were in careers for 40 50 years they like they did one thing and that's what they're doing for the rest of their life like both my parents are are physicians and like that's what they're doing for the rest of their life i think we are going to be there we're going to be much more um transient around that right like we're i think we're going to go from my, many more career changes and uh progressions just because the way that the world changes is a lot quicker and so i don't think that i'm ever done studying right like i'm like i'm passionate about building and coding and so like i'm doing like coding courses right now just like on the side just because like that's sparked my interest and that's what i want to learn more about Wow. Mena, we have another one that just came through the chat as you were mentioning that. So it may have just touched on it, but it says, if you could change one thing you've done so far during your journey, what would you change? 
Um, during my journey specifically at CSU, or in general, I, yeah, no, I, I know, I, on, on, on specifically at CSU, I think I would have pushed what I would have pushed myself to try and get into, like looking back, right, into more um, prestigious and uh, and like and uh, and uh, prestigious and not exclusive, but like very highly selective, um, like clubs and organizations. Uh, I think I like I never tried but i don't know if it still exists but like patty when 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 you and i were at csu there was the like the dean student leadership council right yeah. i think i like i i wish like looking back right now right i wish i would have like applied for that and taken a leadership position or like a position in that right because it helps you even further solidify a really unique network of really highly highly qualified people uh around you so that, like that i think would be for 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 my time at CSU, what I would have changed, and in life, no, I'm 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 I think, like, look, you can have got, could, I could have taken a hundred different turns and directions over over the years, right? But I I I'm pretty happy uh, with where I'm at, and 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 don't have a lot to complain but I'll, I'll think I let me like have a think about that one yeah. and see if there's anything else come back <laughs> I mean yeah yeah it's, you've you've made very made a very good path for yourself and connections yeah. and um there's one more that has come through the chat here it says hi Mano since you mentioned maybe doing a dual major during college what is your recommendation for having a master's degree or anything similar to it yeah um Master's degree depends, right? So, um, if we like, if we think, if I think about an MBA, I would highly recommend that you first go off and work for a few years, right? Really figure out what you want to go and specialize in, and then go and do the MBA. And set yourself a date by when you want to go and do the MBA, right? Like, I want to go and work for three years, and then I want to go back to college, or I want to go back to university and do an MBA. Um, and the reason why I'm saying that specifically in regards to the MBA, I think I like the value that I would be able to extract from an MBA right now is just 10 times I would have been able to extract from a, um, a for, from if I would have done it straight after college, because mm -hmm. um, I, you're just you have gone through so many more situations and you can apply those learnings even like retrospectively back in your head straight away on that. If you are doing something else, right? I mean, like if you're studying say psychology, right? And you're just doing a business minor, right? Like you need to go and get a master's in order to be able to like go and, uh, and apply the profession that you uh, studied for. Um, so um, that would be my uh, recommendation around that and go and, and, and do that. Awesome. Well, thanks for the question, Victoria. Um, we are here at 1230 and I want to respect everyone's time and Menno, I just want to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you for joining us today. Um, we so appreciate love following your journey. I know our entrepreneurship center is a big fan. We all are, um, looking forward to the next news article. We'll read about you, um, and just love getting to chat. Absolutely. With you. And, and if there's any way I can help, right? I mean, I'm pretty easily findable on LinkedIn. I don't think there's that many Mano acts <laughs> in the world. Um, I'm more than happy to like get on calls with people, try and help out, right? Just the only thing is if you add me, like leave a note in there saying like, I heard you on C the CSU business podcast, right? Like I would love to connect because of XYZ because uh, that way I'm, I'm more than willing to help just Tell me why you want to why you want to connect, right? Uh, so so I know that. Awesome. Well, thank you for that offer, Menno. And yeah, students definitely take advantage of that. Uh, Menno is an incredible resource, has a huge network all over the world, um, and so we are very lucky to have him. So thank you, Menno, and uh, we will post the recording tomorrow. Thanks, Patty. Thanks, Sean. All thank right. You. Thanks, everybody.